Hello and welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten. But to start things off, what are we drinking? The Resonator. Pilsner with Polaris hops. For the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about some forgotten made-for-TV horror movies. Probably not going to mention any of the Stephen King ones because everyone knows those. <laughs> yeah. So these are ones that may have flown under your radar. Today we are starting off with 1991's The Haunted. It is directed by Robert Mandel and he's mostly done TV things but he did direct the pilot episode of The X-Files. Sally Kirkland is in this. She was nominated for a Golden Globe for this role in this movie. Jeffrey DeMunn is in this and uh, he's in Walking Dead as everybody I think knows. And uh, he was also in Christmas Evil. Y'all gets laid big time in that. <laughs> yeah. He gets laid big time in this movie too, so <laughs> keep watching to see where that happens. The movie starts off with the Smurl family, of course, moving into a new house. That's right. how most of these haunting movies start. Jack's parents are going to live in one side, and then the rest of the family is going to live on the other side. There's some painting to be done because there's these big stains on the walls. <laughs> yeah. Turns out when they paint over these stains, they don't go away. They keep kind of coming through the paint. The dad, Jack, is doing some plumbing work. And I don't know why he needs a hammer for plumbing. Yeah. But the hammer goes missing. And that's the first kind of like odd thing that happens. And there's several to follow. We're gathering for breakfast, the dad's a little flustered. Of course, the dad's always <laughs> rushing and flustered in these movies. Yeah, he has to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> Mommy, Daddy, the toaster's on fire. <laughs> it up in flames and look. Wasn't even plugged in. <laughs> Look, Mom, wasn't even plugged in. <laughs> Janet is doing laundry and she hears someone calling her name. Janet? Her mother in law is home next door, so she goes over there and the mom's all pissed off looking. She heard Janet and Jack apparently fighting and cursing and using language that she's never heard before. And, but he wasn't even home. They weren't fighting. Mm -hmm. Janet has made some friends in the community and she goes bowling with them. Worst bowling I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. And that's coming from me. I fucking suck myself. I probably look just like her. No form. <laughs> Gutter ball central telling her friends about all this weird stuff that's happening and of course they don't really believe her. And her husband doesn't believe her either. She finally sees one day an apparition goes across the room and through the wall to the other side where the parents live and the mom is sitting there and she's actually seen this apparition go by too. I'm very very scared. <laughs> she just fucking sits in that chair all day. <laughs> <laughs> Janet goes and gets all these books and does some research. The house and the rest of the surrounding community was built over like these mine shafts in the 1930s. There was a cave in. I guess a bunch of people died. Janet wakes up. Feel, there's something touching me. And he actually does touch it and he knows right away that she's been telling the truth. Um, Stop it, you! Stop right now! <laughs> He's yeah. all yelling at the ghost. Reach out to their local parish to the priest. Invite him over for dinner to try and exercise the house. Exorcise. <laughs> Completely blows him off. He's like, well, there's wonderful things with uh, marriage counseling that we're doing. You know, we have wonderful programs and... No, there's nothing wrong with our marriage. There's something wrong with the house. Well, it would still help. I think you should come down and... He does a small... A half-assed bullshit blessing, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He didn't do anything. <laughs> he just went upstairs and got all sick. She goes to the university. The Warrens, Ed and Lorraine Warren, are doing like a lecture. She asks for their help and they end up coming down. You drink often? I like to enjoy a beer if you once in a while. <laughs> if that was us, <laughs> yeah, quite heavily uh, all the time. <laughs> These guys are a couple of fucking drunks. <laughs> oh wait, no! <laughs> So they start kind of doing a bit of a seance type thing, a bit of a blessing in their master bedroom. The drawers and everything start coming out <laughs> and TV turns on, gets all bright. So the Warrens kind of leave, but they also tell them that, you know, this might not be over. Sure enough, one night when Jack is watching like the game on TV, thrown across the room, all of a sudden he starts seeing these like apparitions of like a woman on top of him and like the woman's changing into like this ugly man. And like a sick Halloween wig. <laughs> <laughs> Some cheap little Bo Peep wig. He's all... Yeah. <sighs> While they're camping, they actually see an apparition that appears. Oh, the ghosts need to get out and get some fresh yeah, air too. Yeah, you know, they they want to go camping. They get bored, you yeah. know. <laughs> I want to come too. <laughs> the neighborhood 
is watching their house because their house is like going ape shit. <laughs> There's something inside screaming bloody murder. Yeah. And they think somebody's getting killed inside. So when they get back, the neighbors like pounce on them right away. They're like, oh, you guys are okay. We thought somebody was getting killed at your house. They told him that the cops were actually down at the house. They went inside to look around and there's nothing. There's nobody inside. So they go to the media and plead their case to try and garner some more support. Their house is basically under siege by reporters and people coming around throwing bricks through the windows yeah. and shit. The old man all gets his shotgun out. <laughs> you better get your gun. <laughs> so Jack gets his gun. The church sends a priest to come and actually investigate themselves. Well, a lot of investigating he does, he just sits there for two days. <laughs> just sits on the couch. <laughs> yeah. And then he just leaves. He just leaves. <laughs> She's all pleading her case, please stay, please. I've done all I can do. You didn't do anything, you just <laughs> sat there for two days. The Smurls have nowhere else to turn, and that's where we're going to end it. So what are they going to do? But the reason we're talking about this movie, I think, is because uh, for a, a made-for-TV haunting movie, it's it's pretty good. The fact that it has to be done on a smaller budget, not a big blockbuster budget, helps the movie because... It has to use uh, low budget effects and stuff like that. It's more practical and kind of left to your own imagination compared to a lot of other haunting movies. It doesn't get super over the top and ridiculous. It's closer to real stories that you mm -hmm. hear about hauntings, you know? Yeah. This movie is done in kind of a pseudo documentary style, it brings it to the real world, right? It makes it real. Because a lot of times you hear things and then she goes to look and there's nothing there, right? That's creepy enough yeah like she hears her name being called and there's nobody in the house like fuck if i heard that yeah. i'd be out the door <laughs> it's like the splashing in the tub and there's nothing there it's like again right that's relatable yeah like, yeah that's relatable like, walls bleeding isn't relatable uh -huh. but hearing something it's totally nice. everybody yeah. hears things yeah right? another cool thing about this movie too which a lot of haunting movies don't do is that it takes place over a large period of time it's not like they move in and the shit hits the fan immediately that day or anything. Yeah, and with something crazy. Yeah, like, you see the kids grow up. Like, that's how long of a time it takes. Yeah, I also like, too, how the whole community gets involved. You don't normally see in haunting movies. Not at all. Usually the only the family that's in the haunted house believe mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah. In this, like, the neighborhood starts to believe it, too. Sally Kirkland and Jeffrey DeMunn are really good. They mm -hmm. kind of really make the movie. If you you believe it, right? Yeah. Uh, especially uh, Sally Kirkland. It's no wonder she got nominated. She does a great job in this movie. You really, like, she looks run down all the time from all this shit that's going on. Yeah. So if you like haunting movies like Amityville Horror and The Entity, yep. which we've covered both of those in the past, uh, this movie's kind of like both of those kind of combined. Yeah, without like a big Hollywood budget. Yeah. Which helps, actually. Yeah. So if you're in the mood for kind of a laid-back, more down-to-earth, realistic take on a haunting movie, definitely check out all The Haunted. <laughs> exactly. And don't forget, keep drinking.